Hello, and welcome to this course on best practices to replicate pass by reference in Python. Python's argument passing system is a bit different than those from other programming languages. In this course, you'll be learning how that works and how to mimic certain functionality that other languages provide. This course is for you if you are already familiar with some basics of Python, or maybe you're coming to Python from another language, and you already know something about writing and calling functions. If not, RealPython has some excellent resources about functions you should check out. In this course, you will learn a lot more about how Python's argument passing mechanism works and how to replicate something called pass by reference, which is a useful feature of other programming languages. Specifically, after this course, you should be able to explain what pass by reference is and why it's useful, know how Python's argument passing system is different from other languages' argument passing mechanisms, show how arguments in Python work, use pass by reference on Python's mutable types, and most importantly, write Pythonic code to replicate the effects of pass by reference. This course is based on a tutorial by Marius Mogurosi. I do make some changes, so if you're following along with that tutorial, you'll notice some differences. One, I take a different approach to introducing pass by reference, so the first few lessons will not match the beginning of that tutorial. My examples will be in C++ and not C Sharp. There's a lot less overhead to writing a C++ program, and hopefully that will make those examples a bit easier to understand. These are the software tools I use in this course. If you're used to other programs, then things will look a little bit different than what you're used to. For my program files, I use Visual Studio Code. I do have all of the code examples in the slide, but I'll probably describe the examples in VS Code. All of my code files are available by a link in this course, so you'll have both the slides and the actual files to refer to when wanting to look at the examples. I'm working on a Mac, and I use iTerm for my terminal shell. For other systems, you might be looking at other terminal programs, or maybe something called a command shell or a PowerShell. For interactive Pythons, I use a program called PTPython as my REPL. Its syntax coloring is very effective for these video lessons. So let's get started. In the next lesson, you'll look at passing argument values to parameter variables. In this lesson, you'll learn the fundamentals of passing argument values to function parameters. First, let's review some concepts. A function is a named block of code designed to perform some specific task. An argument is a value provided to the function for the function to use in some way. The argument is stored in the function with a variable often called a parameter or parameter variable. I will try to be consistent and refer to the value given in a function call as an argument and the variable used in the function definition as a parameter. You'll see other resources that use those two terms interchangeably, and you'll even see a few that switch the meanings around. But this is the way that I've used to use these two terms, and you'll see that a lot elsewhere as well. To pass an argument to a function means to give that argument value to its associated parameter variable. So in this example, you would pass an argument for the parameter num. This function would then take that value, multiply it by itself, essentially squaring it, and then return that squared result. So here's a Python file with that function and a script to test it out. When run, the script will give the variable val a value of four, and then call square on that variable's value, which is then printed. We can run this script directly, and see the result. Or we could do this interactively. I'll go ahead and import that module. And PTPython wants to go ahead and run the script that's in it. But we want to look at this interactively. So we can create our own variable, val, 
set it equal to four. Then call square on that variable's value and get the result 16. Of course, we can use a constant to test this out as well or anything else you'd like to try. What's happening? The value four is being provided as an argument to the function square. When the function is called, the parameter variable num is given the value of four and then used in the rest of the function. Let's look at the function definition again. This might seem silly to even mention, but we'd never even consider changing the value of num once the function begins executing. It contains the number we want to square. We don't need to change num to something else. Now, I know there are some functions that implement certain algorithms that require modifying one of the parameter variables for the algorithm to work. But those are very special cases, and they make sense when you see them. Most importantly, the variable val is still 4 when this function is done. And even those rare functions that have to modify the parameter value to work, the argument's value outside of the function won't be changed once the function ends. Now, I realize you may have seen a function or two whose job it was to actually modify an argument. We're not talking about that now. We'll get to that. But that's not the point of this lesson. To understand what Python does with argument passing, it might help to look at other languages first, since many of them have simpler processes than Python does. And you'll see that in the next lesson. In this lesson, you'll look at a mechanism for argument passing called pass by value. Here is a C++ version of that same square function from the last lesson. C++ requires a lot of type information to indicate the kind of values the variables will represent. In this case, I'd like decimal numbers and double precision, so you see the word double. But you can also see the parameter num still exists. It's still being multiplied by itself to perform the square operation, and then its value is returned. Here again, you can see that same function after some standard lines of code that almost all C++ programs need to work. Take your parameter num, square it, and return it. Since I don't have a way to run C++ code interactively, I'll have to write something like a script to test it. In C++, we call that a main function. You can see inside this main function that I create a variable, val. I'm saying it's an integer, but C++ can make it a decimal value when the function is called. The next line is C++'s unique output statement. It begins with the word cout. Then with less than sign type of arrows, we indicate what we want printed. In this case, we want the return value of the function square being called on the value in val 4. The last endl is C++'s way to indicate the end of the line. I'll get in my terminal shell to run this. C++ programs need compiled, and this next statement does that. And then to run it, I type square with some extra punctuation to make it execute. And there you see the result of 16 just as we expected. C++ uses something called pass by value for simple types. I can demonstrate that with a very simplified model of memory. When the main function is run, a specific place in memory is designated to hold the value of the variable val, which has a value of four. When the function is called, a new place of memory is made to hold the value of new and then the value of 4 is copied from val to that memory location. That's what we mean by pass by value. The value is copied from the argument to the parameter. When the function finishes running, the memory for num is removed, but the memory location for val remains until the program itself quits running. Now, I know this is a very simplified explanation of how memory works, but hopefully it illustrates the point that I want to make. 
the value of val for is copy to be the value of new. Pass by value. Pass by value works for simple types, but not for more complicated structures. Here is a simple C++ function to find the mean of a collection of numbers, in this case provided in something called an array. In C++, we have to pass the array and the size of the array as arguments to this function. The array is being saved in the parameter called a and the size in n. I won't go to the details of how this function works. Just know that it loops through the collection, accumulating the sum as it goes. Then it divides that by the size of the collection. Below it, I have a main function that creates an array called numbers and then passes that array and its size to the array mean function. The result is then printed like our previous program. I can go back to the terminal, compile, and run it. and 6.5 is indeed the mean of those 10 values. Let's consider what memory would look like if this collection was being passed by value. First, memory would be created for the array numbers. Then when the function was called, the entire array would be copied into a new location for the parameter a. The point being that the entire array would be duplicated in memory. That's not necessarily a big deal if the array size is 10. But what if it were something larger or much larger? That would be a lot of repeated information in memory. And even if memory size isn't a problem, there'd be a lot of computation time to copy the entire array from one location in memory to another. So pass by value might not be the best mechanism for more complicated types. This is where pass by reference comes in. By the way, Python doesn't use pass by value. You're just seeing it now to compare it to pass by reference, which you will then compare to Python's mechanism. And you'll look at pass by reference in the next lesson.